Alright folks, so I was in the middle of doing some general progress, trying to get us further along through building things. The, the second layer of the wall is built, yada yada yada, I'll go through that after. But for now, the way hyena, fella imarbri enna lude has come. A large hyena twisted in the humanoid form and is crazed for blood and flesh. Its eyes yellow mahogany. Its dark brown hair is long and shaggy. Now you will know why you fear the night. So we've got this paused for now, we're going to go to our military, we're going to press A, we're going to jump across to the burrow, and alert that. We're going to grab squads A and B. Squad C I'll introduce you to soon, but they're nowhere near ready for were beasts, and we are going to go kill from list. We're going to scroll down to that were hyena. We're then going to jump across to the were hyena, we're going to press Z to jump to it, F to follow. It looks like it's killing a camel right now. I'm A-OK -okay with that, it's going to give our other dwarves time to run inside, and our military dwarves to run outside. Oh jeez. Well, it's in the river right now, but it is... ...biting one of our druids, which is a custom uh, profession I made. Okay, so he's dead. That's honestly the, the preferable outcome, versus it, um... ...infecting him and us having to lock him in a room as well. So let's see... Okay, yep, that's all the druid. And then our new military class, the Legionnaire. So we're just going to scroll down here and we're going to check for injuries. And it looks like... Yeah, there, there is none to our guys just yet. This thing is dead. So let's check the Were Hyena and just make sure that it didn't... Yeah, page 8. Right after the kick, one more move. And uh, the Legionnaire bashes him in the skull with a silver mace and kills him. So that guy's dead. We can now go and end our alert. So military A, end the alert. So to give you guys an idea of what I did, I didn't really like the way the auto label was assigning things. It was taking way too long. So what I did was make a bunch of new custom classes. You can't obviously can't assign children to anything. And these guys are the people who are just living in our fort, attacking things in the caves. So we can't do anything with them either. So we're going to refresh because we just lost a derf. So we're down to 90 now. So I made four fishermen and I made druids and yada yada yada. You know most of this, uh, or most of this doesn't really matter too much to you guys. It's just how I've organized things. An ore processor there. And uh, there's just a bunch of custom classes I made. Surf is the base class. These are the guys who just do a bunch of hauling and cleaning and other things. We're just going to double check and make sure that our druid is not the one who was killed. I'll be okay, sorry about one sec, folks. And um, like I was saying, we've made a bunch of custom classes. And this is basically all you use. This is the best way to use Dwarf Fortress I find. So I'm going to make an example class, which we're not going to use. We're just going to use one of these Fisher Dwarfs to make it. Let's say that we really, really need someone for... In fact, we're going to make an edit to a class, which is basically the same thing. Because we want our serfs to have the stone detailing uh, ability. And what you can do, you can either go through a class, say you only want one person from a class to have an ability. So let's let's go find beekeeping, because we know that this is best with one person. And it turns out that the druid who died was actually our beekeeper. So we're going to find our druids here. Scroll along. That guy is now a beekeeper. Done. So that's a change to an individual. That's all you do for dwarf, order, uh, for dwarf therapist. Now we need to change your class. So we have a couple of options of how you can do that. You can either manually click down on each person. This gives you individual control. Or at the top of a certain class, you can click and enable that labor for the entire class. So we're going to do that. We're going to apply that. And then we're going to click on this guy, customization. We're going to update the profession from this unit. So now whoever becomes a, a serf will always have the same skills as Muthkak. And it's the same for creating something. So this surgeon, for instance, he should be a Medikai. So he's probably new. But if you were to create a class, you would assign the labors to the person that you're going to use as the example. Right click, customization, and then you would just new custom profession from this unit. 
and then you would name it as you liked. So we've got petitions available, people wanting to move in. We'll approve that. Awesome. Now I did actually have this game crash earlier. I just finished making all the custom professions and we crashed. I was devastated. But we seem to be fixed now. In fact, have we... Yeah, okay, we've also placed a bunch more coffins down here. And it seems they're filling up just as fast as we, uh, as we make them. Probably has something to do with all of the explorers and the caverns and the uh, web beasts that have been attacking us of late. We've seen a few of those. There's still a couple of guys in here sealed in this room. I think we're down to two now. Udib and this guy. Um, I'm guessing at this point they're starting to get hungry. They've turned once or twice, but they're locked in the room. This dude, Rith, is still... Um, Still chained up. How long has he got left on his sentence? Can we check that? 30 days in prison. I don't know if that's 30 days left. Or just 30 days. We have 104 citizens. That's counting the... Um, you have the cave explorers as well, but we're okay with that. Now let's head down all the way to the bottom of the caves. Which is like 36 ish. There we are. This is where C Squad trains. And Squad C are the chambers of Trammel something. What are they? Doing? Chambers of Trammeling. And this squad is mostly down here to um, keep the cave safe, to save out other dwarves having to run up and down those stairs all day. And so, by that virtue, well, this guy has no equipment yet. We have ordered a bunch more made. But by that virtue, there will be a lot more, um... Huh. Never mind. Well, apparently these guys are running up and down to pick up their equipment. But we would literally just made this squad when the Were Hyena arrived. But uh, I imagine a lot of these guys are going to be taking, uh... Well, I know they are going to be taking a lot more swords and axes. Because there's not too much down here that's going to be using armor, so we don't need to bludgeon our way through it. So even if silver is a mediocre to poor edged weapon material, it's still better in the caves than the uh, hammers are. Just because nothing down there really uses armor. Unless Forgotten Beasts throw up, in which case we're not going to be sending just C Squad anyway. We'll be sending them all, or just closing the door and uh, laughing. But uh, yeah, definitely, um, I experimented with auto labor for the sake of the tutorial. Definitely find that it is easier, maybe not easier, it's, it's definitely more effort on my part to use Dwarf Therapist, but I find I get much better results. So the uh, level two of the wall is built. We have, should have a bunch of digging going on now because the miners are actually miners again. They've got this to do. They have another 20 by 10 stockpile to dig out, and then they're um, going to expand our farm level. We're going to do a bunch of that to uh, make a tree farm. Autumn has arrived. That is fine. I don't think it really makes too, too much of a difference to us at this point anyway. You've got to be careful of the game. You don't click on it too much and actually kill it. Oh, see, the longer your... Um, Fort survives the longer this save process takes. I'm hoping that it's actually going to uh, continue. I really don't want to have like there we are. I was going to say I really don't want to have two crashes in one one hour worth of playing the game. Oh, they've actually dug that out. Okay, so we're going to go stockpile custom, which just double check. Yep. So this is going to. Uh, Basically reuse all the surfs, because we've just got a bunch of stuff that needs putting down in there. And then, uh, really, what we need are just a couple of uh, constructed leather bags. So we're going to press P, going to go across the work orders, Q, going to go to back, no, bag. We're going to order 20 of these. And the reason we're getting those is for all of the seeds that you see scattered around the stockpiles that are taking up like a full square. For a single set of radish seeds, they get stored in bags. So, uh, 
that'll free up a bunch of those stockpiles. Then we're going to go to our carpenter and we're going to order another uh, 25 bins. There we are. Just to, uh, looks like we've got some crafts that are starting to sit out. See a couple of goblets and stuff in there. Now, uh, of, oh, geez, okay. So we have an invasion. First one of these, a full on siege. So again, we're going to activate our military alerts. Let's go take a look. See, we only have, um, yeah, not too many invaders. Where are we looking here? actually don't even see them yet. Where the hell are they? Supposedly they're around here, so are they upper level? Where are these guys? Oh, they're on the very right hand side of the map, okay. Well, what we're actually gonna do is we're just going to get, uh, with there being so few, we're just going to engage these guys in open combat. So we're going to get squads A, B, and C, kill, rectangle, and we're just going to grab all these goblins. Hopefully these guys will bring us a little bit of armor. Even if it's really bad stuff, we can wear it. And we're just going to kill them all. We're sending 30 troops up there. Uh, 10 of them, I expect, won't actually arrive in time to participate in the fight. Did that work? No, squads A, B, and C, kill, rectangle. Yeah, um, with there being so few, we're just going to run out and engage these guys in open territory to avoid the risk of any of our druids being killed again. There we are. With our uh, dwarfs being the uh, legendary people that they are, and having the cover from the crossbowmen to get into uh, the battle here, looks like we have one or two wounds there. Goblin recruit as well. This is just not going to be a good time for him. So we're going to let this pass on. Hopefully, okay, those are goblins in the river. That's fine, as long as we don't see any dwarves fall in. Okay, we've lost a dwarf to the river. Two dwarves. What is it with this river? My god. Well, it looks like we're probably going to be consolidating the squads a little bit there. So we're going to A, B, C, we're going to cancel their orders because, Jesus, we're going to go military alerts. We're going to get rid of that. So we've got one or two wounded. We're going to go and we're going to designate, uh, no, what's up, down, ramp. I don't see carve ramp. Well, we're just going to go with uh, a downward stairway. We're going to carve some of those in. Hopefully the dwarves will get up here and do that quickly, but I doubt it because... Uh, oh wait, no, that's what we need to do. So... Basically... I am a douche. I should not have fought near the river. So now, we're going to attempt... By putting a high priority dig order... To give our dwarves a way out and back... Why didn't that work? Yeah, to give our dwarves a way out and back to uh, land by throwing up some staircases. Hopefully they get here in time. How many dwarves are still down? Oh, did our dwarves make it out? I think they climbed out. Yeah, we're not missing anyone. No one's dead. We do need to make a new hospital now, though. Because, uh, obviously, the other one is currently in use as a... Uh, well, it's it's in use. We, we have a use for that right now. So what we're going to do is literally just order a bunch of beds brought to there. Hopefully they'll get them there quick. We'll just make a really super jank makeshift hospital there. For uh, the wounded to be brought to. Because this one is uh, yeah, still in use. Still alive in there. I wonder how long they're going to last. Because if they're going to be there too much longer, we might have to make 
a new real hospital and keep that as a quarantine room. Okay, so I'm gonna go I, make this a zone, and we're gonna press H for hospital. Hopefully, that means that the uh, the injured will be brought up here once the beds are installed. Like I say, this is a real, really jank hospital. So if we have any breaks, the Legion has a kind of out of luck. But let's take a look. So we've got Silver Bolts doing their job. Let's take a look at this Goblin Axeman. Let's see how his day went. Uh, he got bashed in the upper body with a Silver Warhammer, bruised his lung. Ugh. Bashed again, bruising muscle, bashed again, shattering the right false ribs. That sounds painful. And then he just kind of keeled over and seems like he just keeled over and died. Let's take a look at this Goblin Bowman. How did you do? This is four pages of... Okay, so we got one guy got a muscle torn. We got bruising ribs. And another bruised bone and torn muscle, and then they're getting close range. And the first thing that happens is a legionnaire stamps on this goblin's foot, and it explodes into gore, which is just fantastic. And then there's four pages of like the legionnaire kicks the goblin bowman in the right foot with his right foot, and the injured part explodes into gore. So this goblin's got no feet at this point. They're getting absolutely hammered, literally just hammered. Awesome. So it seems like, yeah, another two pages of flying bolt misses, flying bolt misses, tears the guts. That could be an issue. And then once people get close, it's not even a contest. So luckily we uh, didn't actually lose any dwarves. The medics should now be on their way up to see to these dwarves, hopefully. Scroll down and see what we can find here as far as the medics go. Uh, looks like they're doing nothing. That's cool. You know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to go into Dwarf Therapist and we're going to edit the medic class. We have four of these guys to tend to our wounded. We're going to turn off all of their other labors. Their only job ever... is going to be tending to the wounded because the longer these wounded stay here the worse it gets now we have a bunch of splints waiting to be uh, used we, we made 20 of those the only thing we really lack to make this appropriate is um, soap to clean out wounds so hopefully now our, yep, we have diagnosed patient. I see at least one of those. Yep, dress wound, clean patient, diagnosed patient. So our, our medics are now up here doing their jobs. And they're doing it in a damp, mud-floored mud cave, which is just the perfect environment, really. It's exactly where I would want to be uh, treated. So it looks like we have three wounded... We know we got um, one or two just like minor, oh hi guys, nice to see you again. We have a couple of minor wounds, just from crossbows. Throw down a couple more of those. Needs empty bucket to clean patient. Well, we know that he can get around to that. But that means that we definitely should make a couple more buckets for after. Look at this, guys. We are nearly done with the mining. How cool is that? It's only taken us, like, two or three episodes longer than it should have. Okay, so yeah, they're definitely complaining about empty buckets. So we'll, we'll order those now. I think we only have the one true carpenter's workshop. So we'll just... Out of work order. Fuck it. You know, we'll order 20 of them. Now that we have the underground area and there's a bunch of trees sprouted on the surface, which we're actually going to go order some of those cut down, 
I am much less concerned with being uh, frugal with my wood use. We are just going to order everything chopped down up there. There we are. More petitions. It's a shame uh, C Squad couldn't get up in time to be involved in that, but hey ho. And now that we're up here, we're going to go for uh, DB to reclaim all these items. Because any of the bolts that were fired and any of the armor that the goblins were wearing will uh, not be recovered. That was the first siege, and that was basically them testing us. They will come a lot stronger next time, but let's see what we got here. So we got silk robes, hoods, splattering of goblin blood. There's an iron bow there. Uh, there's a copper helm. That'll go to one of our guys. What do we have here? Copper crossbow. We could use that. An iron helm. That actually looks like it's moderately okay. It is sized for goblins. The object is showing some wear. So that's actually a bad iron helm. Sized for goblins does mean it can be used by dwarves. Uh, what do we have there? Is that one of our wooden shields or is that a goblin shield? That's a copper shield, so that's new for us too. Uh, we're obviously just not going to be able to recover the stuff that's at the bottom of the river. And that's something worth taking into account for the future. That river is just going to slowly fill up with uh, goblin and or dwarf corpses. So we should definitely be trying to fight them not near the river, but because of the moat and what we've done, we're basically always near the river. So that's something we are going to have to keep in mind. Is anyone still in the hospital? Nope, so it seems like um, health issues have been addressed. But we have a mandate from... Oh no. English has just decided that they need more stuff. Well, we can order another chest and another uh, armor stand and weapon rack. It'll take a while for those to be made, but hey-ho. Wow, is that like silver swords and stuff up here? Yep, silver short sword, which has uh, sharpness of 90% of iron. I think because we're making um, such good quality weapons now, we're actually making good weapons. Isn't that a pip? And we're making booze. Are we still making that from both stills? No, okay, I forgot to restart this one when we crashed. How are we doing for booze? We're down to five, so we still have booze. Just not a whole lot. Once the uh, druids get the second still fired up, we should be... Oh, that's fine. That's the guys down here in the... Uh, in the quarantine. Eventually, we're going to have to do something about that. I just don't know what. And someone is oblivious and not preparing rare fish. That is... Well, it's not fine, but... It's, uh... It could be worse. While we have the druid's attention, we're actually going to designate for plants as well. We're just going to harvest a bunch of plants from the surface. We're going to put this as a lower priority for them. We're going to put this as like a six. So just if they have nothing else to do, go upstairs and, you know, grab some wildflowers or whatever. Make some dandelion tea. Or in Dwarves case, we'll make like wild carrot vodka. And yep, it actually seems like we are wearing those helmets because we have giant leather caps down there. Something I do want to check on the stocks, which is Z and then... Down here, we do have a little bit of cloth. I want to look for eggs. We have like 369 eggs. That's pretty dope. But what we're looking for... Uh... Okay, it doesn't actually seem to list leather, so maybe we just don't have any. But from the next um, caravan to arrive, we definitely want to try and procure a bunch of... Um cloth and leather to make some clothes because we've been here a few years a lot of the dwarves aren't going to be wearing good clothing anymore it's going to be turning to rags and that upsets them quite a bit how are we for uh, we do have drink but people are choosing to drink from the well that or they'll be cleaning themselves at it I don't, I'm not entirely sure 
looks like people are just wandering around the fort vomiting too, which is, you know, that's just peachy. We're okay with that. Let's grab these and assign some of these for burial. We did install one or two more. And with how we've been going, they're just instantly going to be claimed and someone's going to chuck some bones in there. Is this... Oh, it's so close, guys. And then we've got just the the residential expansions going on upstairs. So that we can get people out of the... Oh, what's going on here? Oh, the outpost liaison in a caravan. Nice. So, speaking of crafts and trading... Let's request our broker. We're going to press G for goods. Let's see how much we actually managed to get made of our uh, crafts. We got... Oh, yeah. So we need more bins. We got two full bins and then a bunch of other stuff. So that should be enough to buy some cloth and some leather. Just to stop people, people being um, upset because... Uh, I've heard that walking around an underground cavernous area while naked is probably a bit chilly. I would also be upset by this. So I'm not going to hold it against them. A makeshift hospital. I think we're actually going to make a second hospital wing. Just because uh, we're going to need one if the one we're currently using takes too much longer. Okay, looks like the miners are actually bringing a bunch of stuff up to the depot right now. So that's looking pretty good. Of course, there's vomit everywhere. For I'm sure there's a good reason for the vomit. Someone's actually cleaning it. One of the miners is cleaning the vomit in the uh, barracks. Good for you, buddy. Let's discuss your situation. There's much to share. Okay, so the world has evolved. What requests do you have of our merchants? Um, you know, we actually would like iron at a decent uh, quality. Look over these documents. Well, how much are you going to charge us extra for that? 139%. I think we're okay with that. And they want short swords, battle axes, splints, thread, and some other things. We're actually going to be buying thread from them for our hospital because it's used to close wounds. And as we know, we have a wear beast problem at this area. Okay, I think we might be... Yep, we're ready to trade. Oh, well, they're still unloading, so maybe we're not. Small above ground farm producing uh, potatoes. Wooden shields are done, so Squad C should now be um, fully equipped. And you can see, definitely, definitely better off on the idler front now that we've uh, made our own jobs list. So it is a bit more work, and if you're brand new to the game, you might be better off using auto labor. But I'm definitely finding that, uh, for me at least, it's better without. The serfs in here are obviously getting quite annoyed. This guy's wearing a crown, though. I mean, look at him. He's wearing spider silk and cool crowns. Oh, somebody's just went attached to a copper battle axe. It's like one of the worst weapons in the game. Oh, well. Any weapon is usable once you give it to a legendary dwarf. And with the time we've been putting into training, that's a large portion of our dwarves. Any of our, no, I would, guys are actually storing things in stockpiles right now, our miners. But you know what? That's honestly not too big of a deal. We can, we can let them have that. Sure, you can live in my fort. Why can't we trade yet? Supposedly our noble is there to trade, but it's just not happening yet. We have requested him, haven't we? Trader requested a depot, yeah. And his job is trade at depot. Well, for now, we'll ignore that. We'll check back in a couple of minutes. I would love for this to be done. So that I can expand the farm area. And then we'll expand the residential some more. 
What are you doing right now? Just grabbing some of the wood from up there. Okay. You know what I think we're going to do then? We're going to come down here and we're just going to reprioritize. So we're just going to go down to one. At the very least, we'll do this corridor. Because by the time they're done with that, hopefully the other serfs will have brought in all of the wood. And then we won't have to worry. about uh, redoing every single room manually. How's that doing? Yeah, that's probably why there's so many who are just wandering around. There's a lot to be brought in and out. Looks like a lot of people are weapon swapping as well. Probably from the, uh, well, that's definitely from the new C squad. You can tell from his sprite. How are these guys doing? Let's go down and check on them. See what kind of weapon choices they're making. Because I do want them using the axes and the swords. But I'm not going to forbid them from using something else, because it generally means that is where their talents lie, or it's where the better stuff is. And as long as the majority have sharp weapons, we're fine. I'll, I'll allow spears. Spears are sharp. Oh, he's got a named weapon. What is it? Amaldist. Let's... Oh, we've got another codex. But uh, we're looking for Amaldist. There it is. A pecan wood shield, okay, so his shield is named. So he's got a silver battle axe, we have short sword, short sword, short sword, yeah, we're mostly using swords here, which is what we were hoping for from this squad, mostly swords and axes. Seems like we've gotten it. Let's actually take a look in the caves. Oh, actually, it's a bit of a... So there's just a bunch of capital... There's a cave crocodile and one troglodyte. You know what we're going to do? We're going to order Squad C to get its first kill. And we'll uh, see who... See who finishes it off, eh? Now, troglodytes aren't a difficult enemy. I don't expect this to be a difficult fight. In fact, that human whatever guy is probably going to take care of this for us. Human spearman. He's been doing a lot, actually. Oh, there's a cave crocodile. Looks like a human spear must take care of that too. We have an elf pikeman in the uh, fort who's actually like an absolute monster. I saw him kill like cave ogres and everything, so. Troglodyte, how are you doing? Oh yeah, this troglodyte isn't even going to last for our dwarves to get them get, get the kill. So apparently that human is the best guy in squad C. But, oh well. Head back up a bit. So we're actually done in there. Are we now doing any mining? We are. Awesome. So it looks like they have decided that this is worthwhile. Hopefully we don't have to redesignate uh, absolutely everything, but if we do have to, we will. And then uh, after this episode, we'll probably do another little time skip while we allow Squad C to get its shit together, basically. And then we might send out a raid for the first time, trying to interact with, uh, yeah, interact with other settlements. And show you how that works. Oh, child has been possessed. Cool, what are you going to claim, kiddo? So he was in the stockpiles. Looks like he's going for maybe the craft dwarf or the lumber. Yeah, he's going for the craft dwarf's workshop. Or is he? Masons, maybe? No? Where the... Oh, uh, where on earth is this kid going? Mechanics workshop? Oh, well, he might be claiming the, the back crafts... No, leatherworks? No, oh, yeah, back crafts dwarfs workshop. Kid, you disappoint me. Nothing cool comes out of crafts dwarfs workshops. It's just, just a fact. But the mining is uh, getting done finally. And when they're done with this, we'll um, order another big expansion, like up and down ways. And then we should have more than enough rooms. Okay, he's begun his construction. I didn't bother to sit and wait and see what he picked up. 
If he'd been in, like, the forge, I might have waited to see what he made, but... He picked the Graf's Dwarf's workshop. Let's see if we can trade yet. Yes, okay, so we're getting four grand for that. These are all loose, so we'll have to uh, just rough select these. And I think this might actually be the first big trade that we're going to get done here from uh, this fort. What are, we, what are we watched walls or revered rings? Well, one of those, something like that. So let's see. We're going to take their iron bars. We'll take a couple of bits of glass again, just in case people need it for other things. Don't need to worry about ropes, we can make our own chains. Don't need to worry about um, anything made from leather, we have our own leather works, and we're going to buy whatever leather these guys have brought with them. You know what, we'll buy some beer and ale. We don't need milk. Don't need any wood buckets. We'll keep our eyes out for cool equipment that's not super expensive. Because if we could find something that's well made, but isn't like super encrusted. Like, look at this copper warhammer. It's got things next to it that mean it's encrusted with gems that are putting its value up instead of its actual um, useful qualities. Steel breastplate. An expensive steel breastplate. How much money are we working? We're working with 10 grand, so we're probably not going to take that. <clears throat> but we'll take some bronze low boots. We'll take a copper low boot. Where's the other one? They, they pretty much always come in pairs. Steel low boot. Another set of bronze low boots. And we'll put that copper one back for now. Just because I don't see its uh, its partner. It might be down on the next one. Uh, shields, I don't think we care too much about. Helms, yeah, we'll take a couple of helms. Take an iron cap. This is how we're going to have to require basically most of our armor. Steel helm, nice. Bronze. Uh, we don't need to worry about gauntlets and such for now. Especially not at that price. If we see them cheap, we'll pick them up. Like uh, 220, for instance. How much is that? 338? Where's the other one? Don't see the other one, so we're probably going to skip that one. Okay, and now we're down to um, bags of seeds, which we have plenty of our own, and now that we have the underground area, we definitely don't need. But we are going to try and take a bunch of this cloth. And the leather. The leather tends to be a lot cheaper because you tend to not be able to make as much in the way of clothing with leather compared to cloth. But um, we're going to take both as much as we can afford. Because most of our dwarves will be walking around in rags and that will be affecting their moods. And right now we do have a little bit of an issue with uh, dwarves in the fortress not being happy. We don't need to worry about food and drink, but we do need to get thread. So I'm actually going to stop buying cloth and leather in there. Because like I say, this, uh, this trader is going to want to walk away with some profit. So I'm going to go past all of the food as well. Prepared jaguar kidney. That sounds like it would either be one of those things you would buy once to say you've eaten it. Or you would completely avoid because it sounds kind of gross. Bunch of yarn, a little few more bits of thread. Okay, so he seems pleased with the trading. Awesome. Well, it's the first time we've seen that, and that will have something to do with the fact that our dude is getting better at his job. We're now gonna leave, uh, leave the jobs alone for a little bit. We now have a bunch of hauling to be done. Oh, looks like the uh, human got uh, got messed up a bit. Probably, is it the one? No, that one's fine. The human lady. Human spearman. Yeah, human spearman got uh, crocodiled up a bit. Let's take a look at his health. His wounds. He's unconscious. 
and his right wrist, left knee and right ankle have uh, been bitten a bit. But with our amazing staff at our, uh, I don't know, Stoneheart Hospital, shouldn't be an issue, even if it is in a fungus cave right now. Now I know I said we were going to leave jobs alone, but we are going to order this area back here smoothed out and use the time that they're busy doing that before they haul the furniture in to expand our fungus farms, our underground tree farms. Let's take a quick look. We've got elk birds, we've got human spearmen, we've got one humped camels, human pikemen. Yeah, so there's nothing really to worry about. So, this area, we're going to expand to basically be touching the walls at any given point. We are going to keep this little um, wraparound entryway thing, just because I like it. There's no other reason. We're going to uh, paint the outside edges first, get everything as close as we can without breaching the river. Because breaching the river right now would end our fortress. I'm actually going to build a door here, just as a safety measure in case I do do something stupid. It's very, very difficult to actually breach a river. Like, it will tell you straight up, hey, there's a damp stone here, so your miners have stopped digging. If you then dig again, you can manually, like, breach the river and flood your fort. Now this area should be a nice big square. Of course we're going to get rid of this little bit here. Well, digging that out. No? Good. I don't know why that has that. Oh, he needs a crutch. We need to make some more crutches. Okay, well that's fine. We can, we can make some crutches. We'll order those in a moment, but for now, you know what, that'll be a big enough tree farm. That's plenty of size. So let's go down to our woodworker. And we shouldn't need too many of these. I know we have some that are just like kind of strewn around the fort, but we'll just order another five or six crutches. Sure, you can live here and eradicate monsters. It's a fairly common occupation in this fortress. Human macemen. We like mace people. Maces and hammers. We're pretty fond of those here. Looks like the smoothers are down here now. Once this has been smoothed, we'll order the furniture brought in. Then once the furniture's brought in, we'll expand in another wave. Because by then the miners should be done up here. Because as we saw in one of the earlier episodes... Going through mud like this is a whole hell of a lot quicker than going through stone. Because of the sheer amount of dwarves we have and all of the running water that's constantly being calculated, I think we're actually, um, the game's just running a bit slow. That'll happen over time with Dwarf Fortress. The longer you have a fort, generally, the slower it gets, the more it's got to process, because it's also doing the merchants, even though they're just standing still, and it's doing everything down in the caves constantly. Looks like that human is uh, done in the hospital. Dwarven child has created a saguaro rib vacist. So a vacist must be an instrument. Let's take a look. Tempted crush, a saguaro rib vacist. This is a saguaro rib vacist, or craft dwarf ship is of the highest quality. It is decorated with saguaro rib wood and encircled with bands of, so it's just wood. The Vacist is a large stationary percussion instrument. It consists of an hourglass wooden drum with a leather head which rests on a stone stand. The musician strikes the head with a metal stick and the instrument produces a complex sound that cannot be said to be of a single pitch. The instrument has a reedy rich timber. So we made a giant like cool war drum. I'm actually more impressed with that than I thought I'd be. I think some of these items might be from, like, Dead Adventurers, as well as the, uh, Dead Goblins. 
But things are going well. Things are going real well in the fort. Let's actually do a, um, a scan with Dwarf Therapist and see how Dwarves' moods are going. Because we've slowly been on the up since the, uh, the incident. You see on the left-hand side here, people are fine. We're not seeing any, like, red. Oh, there's a red. Vabog, why are you... You're very unhappy. Vabog might be one of the two in the infirmary. Let's go check. No, that's Udib and Erush. So, we do have one unhappy dwarf. Um, squad a kill from this, can we? It's a shame we can't order those two dwarves killed. Because I would happily just send my dwarves in to kill those guys. Given the opportunity, but they won't let me unless they're turned in their wear form. And they haven't starved to death, and it's been a few seasons, so I'm not sure if that's actually even going to happen. I wonder. If we made another squad with them, could we send them away? I'm just accepting literally anyone who wants to live here and fight monsters. Let's, um, let's take a look at... Go see if we can find Relic, the only named dwarf in the fort. Let's see if he has any kills yet. He does have kills. Uh, the... Oh, he's... he killed one of the giants. Cool. So he killed the beast that turned back into a dwarf, and then two years later slayed a giant. I definitely think he's going up in the world from an unarmored dwarf that it took him four pages to kill to claiming one of the uh, giants. Oh, we also give Relic that room there, the nice room that uh, Fickard moved out of when he was being too fussy to stay with the normal dwarves. So Fickard is down on the administration level in the old mayor's quarters. Oh, actually, now that I remember, we need to place more armor stands and weapon racks for the Baron. Because he's just not happy having almost everything in the world. He needs to have actually everything in the world. But now he's not... Oh, because we've ordered them placed, okay. And you know, I think we might make our Great Hall. Or at least plan that out. Pretty quick soon here. What floors do we have left that we could do that on? Well, we could go one above the craft floor. That could work. A lot of people running around detailing things. and Around... Um, we have 109 citizens, but a, a lot of those aren't dwarves. We have 96 dwarves, and a th so a third of our population is in the military. Let's put down these last couple of coffins. And then we have all the mine floors down there. making masterpiece short swords. That's pretty cool. How are the miners doing? Well, they're getting there. There's quite a bit of this being carved out, and you can already see wild uh, cave plants growing down here. So I think for a while, at least, we're just going to remove our subterranean farms and let wild plants go. And then some point in the future, once we've uh, once we've collected a bunch of the wildflowers, we'll use the stuff from those to do another underground farm similar to the way we set up the above ground farm where we uh, propagate it using the outside stuff we did tell our yeah we did okay just making sure that we didn't leave our noble stuck in the stockpile there so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go down to this floor here and we're gonna plan out our great hall we're going to make this a low priority. This is going to be like a six. But it is going to need to happen. And I think we're going to have two sets of doors there. Into a short three wide corridor. Maybe five or six things long. Because we're going to maybe make a food stockpile over here. In fact, yeah, that's what we'll do.
That one's going to be exclusively for food. And then another set of double doors there. Let's give ourselves a basic shape to work with here. Let's go for like from this middle section. Let's go 10 either direction to get us some nice symmetry going. I don't know if I want this all the way. Yeah, we'll go this high up. That should be even. And then let's add some like decorative bits. Let's go for like a four and a two, one away from the edge. We'll do the same over here. And this is the middle point. So we'll go a five and a three there. Followed by another one, just to add just like a little bit of something else to it. And then what we might do is divide up each of those areas with like these little pillars. We'll probably put statues at the top to give something else a look there. Yeah, I kind of like that. That'll make an okay haul. It's not like mind-blowingly amazing, but that'll give us three like distinct sections of this hall. I think I'm okay with that. How is the engraving going down here? You can actually see how much slower things are going based on how slow these dwarves move. We, uh, we used to go a lot quicker than this. But that is a-okay. Erush is still turning into a were hyena. I'm getting somewhat concerned that these guys aren't starving to death. I think, um... I'll check in between episodes if they actually can starve to death. Dwarf Fortress is the game that you don't have to feel guilty about using the wiki for. But I definitely feel like if they aren't going to starve, we're going to need another plan. And I think my plan might be to wait for there to be something at least a little bit dangerous in the caves. And send them both down there to try and fight that when they're in their human form. Or dwarf form or possibly um, maybe station them permanently like outside on the top of a hill because it seems like they normally turn at a specific date it seems like the fifth maybe no that was the fifth month the date is a 72 we need to wait for the date to change so I can see if this is written in American style dates or sensible dates. Item are inaccessible. I don't know what item's inaccessible, but we aren't getting more alerts about it, so it's fine for now. We can see the um, tree farm starting to grow things there. Yeah, the date isn't actually changing up on the top. It might only change once a season. Oh no, it just changed to the 13th. The day did change. Okay. So, it goes year, month, day. It seems like they were, they were transformed on the 12th this month. We'll have to keep an eye on it and see if we can figure out the days they change. Or we'll just wait until after their next transformation. And, um... Drag them out into the deepest reaches of the caves. So that when they next turn, we can send squads A, B, and C after them. Because we're hyenas are no joke. But also, while they're on the rampage down there, they'll kill anything else that's down in the caves. Oh, that's an issue though. Our hunters live down, well they don't live, but our hunters work down in the cave pretty much 24-7 and they would get mauled by those guys. That is unfortunate. We'll think of something, but it definitely seems like the um, leave them to starve to death in the hospital plan has not entirely panned out. I wonder if we can exile them. Because I know you can um, send people on expeditions and things, so if we could just exile them out of the fort, that'd be pretty good. I think we'll take a look at that next time. In the next episode, folks, we're going to try and put the uh, the final final judgment down on those two dwarves. We've got this room all dug out, so that's pretty nice. We're uh, starting on our main hall already, so 
Once they're done smoothing that out, we'll expand there again. And we'll hopefully smooth out and decorate our, uh, our main hall. So as usual, folks, thanks for joining me, and I hope to see you next time.